fair? I don't know. You don't uh, know. Okay. So, so, so from what I recall in the books themselves, it's like, yes, that there will be some intervention, but mm. do I genuinely believe that's going to be the case? I, I have no idea. Right, okay, so let me just read you what the hadith say in terms of that, because I, you know, I was kind of looking up the stuff and All right. researching and but See, I'm, not, I'm not an expert, so... That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. And I just want you just to, just to get your kind of... Um, sure. Your response into what, what I'm going to read here. Okay? So, just speaking about... My, um, so, Sudan Abu Dawud. Um, this is obviously one of the hadiths you have here. Yeah. And so, it says here... Um, this is... Um, it says, The Holy Prophet, intercessor of the sinners, said, Pulpits of gold will be arranged for the prophets, and they will sit on them, and my pulpit will remain empty, as I will not sit on it. But I shall stand humbly before my Lord, fearing that I may be sent into paradise with my Ummah, uh, while my Ummah remains behind me. I shall then pray, O oh my Lord, my Ummah, my Ummah, Allah the Supreme will proclaim, O oh Muhammad, what is your wish regarding what I should do with the Ummah? I shall submit, O oh my Lord, settle their accounts quickly, so I will continue to intercede until I get letters to get released. Uh, uh, I get letters to get released those who had already been sent to hell. Okay, so the point I'm making here is that according to your most authentic hadiths, it states explicitly that Muhammad would be an intercessor. Okay. okay. Now, the question I want to ask, now we've kind of drawn up that premise, is what is interesting about all of this is that Muhammad was a man who, who did a lot of things. We, we know the several things he did, yes? But one of the things I want to draw on today is that he was a man that did a lot of cursing. Okay? So he would curse people. He would curse people, you know, um, he would curse a woman or he'd curse, um, I don't know, different variety of people. Okay? I'm, I'm not aware but, of any of the curses. But, okay, but okay. I, I'll, I'll bring up, I'll read some of them for you if, you, if, you, if you're not but, aware but of them. Why are you but the question asking I'm asking about, is this, yeah, the question yeah. I'm asking is this, right? According to the, um, to the hadith, it says that those who curse cannot be intercessors. Yep. But yet, but yet they, um, Allah, according to the hadith, Allah puts Muhammad on such a um, high pedestal and says that you are going to be an intercessor, yet he's a curse. So what that then shows is that by his own, um, by his own, um, if you like, um, how can I put it? By his own stra um, standards, he has now forfeited being a prophet. Because Allah says anyone who curses will be, um, will, cannot be, um, cannot be a, a prophet. But at the same time, it says that Muhammad, yeah. oh sorry, a man who, it cannot be an intercessor, but at the same time, Muhammad was an intercessor. So can you not see that logical contradiction in, your, in his language? So, so you're, you're asking the wrongest person to answer this question. And the reason okay. for that is, number one, I do not feel that the hadiths are in any way reliable or should be referred to uh, really? for, for, a, for a couple of reasons. Number one, you have to recognize that most of these hadiths were collected, in some cases, centuries after the death of the Prophet. And you and I both know that a message can take different shapes depending on how it changes over time. So if you tell me something this week, for example, I can probably misremember it in a week, let alone a couple hundred years after I've communicated it to my grandkids and they communicate it to their grandkids. Mm. Uh, so in my, my, in my humble opinion, the hadith themselves in my mind have always been a weakness they haven't been a strength and the, and you're basically citing that yes there are contradictions in the hadith that hadith a is saying a but hadith b is saying b which are in complete opposition to one another which to my mind tells me hang on this is not a reliable source of information that i can refer to if i can find two valid points that says black and white that tells me that no this is not something so you're bringing up an excellent contradiction right there. brilliant brilliant thank you mustafa for responding to that yeah? my, my response to to what you've just said is this See, when Muslims say to me that, um, that they, don't, they cannot use the hadith as a valid source of information, two questions arise in my mind. Sure. The first question is this. If the hadith cannot be used, one, the hadith contains the five pillars of Islam. Um, so, for example, you have things like Hajj or your, you know, when you take your Shahada, it's yeah. the hadith. When you do your Salat, your five prayers, all of these things are are all in the hadith, they're not actually in the Quran. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things, like your whole, the whole five pillars of Islam is based, from, it comes from the, um, from the hadith. The second thing is, if they say the hadith is not reliable, 
okay? The question then I have to, exp uh, or I would like you to explain then is that sure. what makes a, ha a hadith unreliable or daif, if you like? You know or something that is not authoritative? Yeah. Because it's all, it's all well saying, well, you know, it's not true. It came hundreds of years later. But what makes it, what makes it not authoritative? That's number one. Sure. And number two is, how do you then become, how do you maintain being a Muslim when the had, when the hadith contains all the principles and all the standards for you to be a Muslim? Excellent question. It's in the same way uh, a, a Christian person would follow the words of Jesus Christ today. Uh, you, I would recognize that Jesus, for example, was assuming, of course, that there was a man by the name of Jesus who received a message from God or was in some way God, uh, was alive 2,000 years ago. He would take a very different form and appearance and way of communicating if he was present today than he was 1,000 or 2,000 years ago. So when I look at the Hadiths, number one, I look at them very skeptically, first of all, because A, I don't know if this is 100% accurate or not, and second, I look at it in context of the time itself. So there were abhorrent things occurring thousands of years ago. The people were taking slaves, people were raiding other tribes to survive, uh, anyone who would sort of shun your way of living would be killed. Those are abhorrent by today's standards, but those were normal over a thousand years ago. So when I look at those hadiths, again, it is with a very high degree of divorce between how I live my life today and how that life was around then. And on top of that, it's with some skepticism. Hang on, the source of this was number one by people who were not adhering to the same levels of rigor that you and I would adhere to today in a traditional news report, let alone uh, you know someone someone's religion. And second of all, there is a contextual matter. A thousand years ago was a very different time to be alive. People led different lives. So even even after looking at that, it's so you're bringing up contradictions that I think about all the time. And and a lot of the Muslim people here in Speaker's Corner would find me a very disagreeable character. To speak no, 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 no. And and I which, which is why I'm, which is why I'm confused. Is this you why you're asking me? No, 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 I, I appreciate that because you're, you're, it sounds like you're, um, you're a unique thinker. I'll say that because you don't fall under this kind of bracket of this is how Muslims should think and so on and so forth. But my question still sure. remains. My question yeah. is this: is that because before I move on, um, the question is this: is if you as a Muslim you practice being a Muslim, you do your five salats, the five salat or the, your five prayers a day. Uh, I mean. These are not found in the Quran. You, you're going to, you, you may, I don't know, do your Hajj or you may do um, certain other things that are, 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 meant, are, are contained in no, Islam. I understand where you're coming now, from, yeah. Now, if these are, um, these are fundamental and these are the foundations of Islam, okay, can you really say that you are, you are practicing Islam or you're practicing what the Prophet taught or your, your Prophet taught if you are putting these aside? Number two, and you know, you've used this argument again, that how can we know it's authority? You know, the, you know these, these men, they wrote many years you know, after Muhammad died. We can't show if this was the correct information and so on and so forth. Can you give us, this, uh, give us an evidence to show how the chain of narration shows that this p person, this particular individual, stops this, this actual hadith from being authentic or being authoritative in terms of your, your religion? I just want those questions to be answered yes. before I move on, because I really want to talk no, about... I, I understand yeah, that. Yeah. So, so, so as far as the customary practices that come with the religion, yeah. the reason they have continued is because they've been associated with it. And because enough people believe that this is the way it should be done, it becomes the way it should be done. Uh, it's not about the, the faith says you should pray in this way. And you're absolutely right to point out the Quran does not say, how should I pray? the number of times I pray and on what occasion. So what do you do next? Okay. No, so, so all I'm doing is following what I am taught by, by, by my grandparents and my parents and whatnot. So it's a, it's a community. So you could be wrong about this? I, I tell them we could very well be completely wrong. But because it's become part of the accepted norm, it's like it's like looking both sides before crossing the street. You don't have to look both sides before crossing the street, but that's something people teach you to do. Uh, but, or, but, but, but again, and, and as far as the Hadiths themselves, as far, so, so the sort of the Islamic scholars say that no, it's there, there is some aspect of rigor that goes into it, but then I would say yes, but that aspect of rigor is 800 years old. What else do we do today that relies on rigor and methodology that is 800 or more years old. So, so yes, it's what we have, and you work with what you've got, but that's it. That's the only excuse. I appreciate that. What I would say to, in response to that is, if you're just simply just throwing the hadiths under the bus, 
throwing your um, traditions and your sources under the bus and saying, hey, I didn't hey, listen, say just, that. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of using my understanding of my interpretation of what you are saying to me because you're essentially saying to me that um, you're just simply going by what you what's been passed on from your parents and from your experience of being a Muslim but there is nothing fundamental or there's nothing um, there's nothing f firm about what your belief is and so essentially what I would conclude is that your eternal life or your in terms of your um, your relationship or your keeping of commandments of Allah is basically here, not, uh, neither here or there, because you're not actually doing what the Quran says, which is actually states that follow my prophet and obey him. And how do you obey your prophet, the prophet? Well, you can't. You don't have this information in the Quran. You find all of this information in the hadiths. But anyway, that aside, I mean, the question I would like, the essential question. I would, let's go to the Quran. You know, seeing, seeing that you, you know, you're, 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 you're adamant that. The hadiths cannot be used, even though I don't know how you can be a Muslim without the hadiths. But let's but let's let's go into what the Quran says. So 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 so, so just in this in the Quran, Surah 47:19, it states explicitly that Muhammad was a sinner and that he asked forgiveness for his sins. Okay, Allah commands him to ask forgiveness for his sins. Let me just read that for you, just okay. Let's see if I got there. So it says here. So no, O Muhammad, that there is no God save Allah, and ask forgiveness for thy sins and for the believing men and believing women. Allah knoweth both your place of turmoil and place of rest. So Surah 47, um, 19, you've you got other um, 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 Quranic verses like Surah 48, 1 and 2, you've got Surah 45. And so over and over again in the Quran, it states that Muhammad is a sinner. Okay? Now, I would like to just get your response to this. Sure. Would you say that somebody who, who, who lives a life of continual perpetual sin is someone who's a good example to follow because in the Quran it states that he's the greatest um, example, the perfect example for all Muslims or for humanity. Would you say he's a he's a great example? So, so Godwin, I'd have yes. to sort of second that uh, by, by asking you an important question is do you speak to any Muslims outside of Speaker's Corner? Oh yeah, absolutely. 100%. Are they anything like the people you speak to here? Some of them are, some of them are Some of them are not. So, so what the guy you're speaking to is kind of an outlier within the Islamic community. So, so my word shouldn't be taken. Yes, myself. I'm a bit of an outlier. So, so an outlier meaning of so, so if I was to sort of plot people's conservatism and level of literalism and in a bell chart, I'd be somewhere on the edges. I'm, I'm somewhere on the edges. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay. so, so the aspect for me, and this is something I have against the hardline Muslims over yep. here, is oh, that yeah. there is it's not a perfect example. Would you say? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's about. A, it's, it, that's the thing. To them, perfect example is kind of a deification. You see what I mean? I they are raising the Prophet Muhammad to a point where he's almost being deified, totally which agree. is in a complete contradiction to yes. what the Prophet himself wanted. He's like, I do not want to be deified. If I want to be buried in an unmarked grave. I want to be X, X, Y, and Z, and no one listened to him. So you do believe Muhammad was a sinner? I believe he was imperfect. Yeah, yes. so no, but a sin, and, yeah, but a sinner. We're yes, all imperfect. Yes, but yes, absolutely. Okay. So, so because we, because obviously we have numerous texts that speak about Muhammad. For example, we had a, I was re, I was discussing with someone um, about how Muhammad beat up this Jew, and then this is why Allah told him, you know what? You need to ask forgiveness for your sins. So, so I don't, yeah. yeah. So, so I don't know. About, do you understand? I understand where yeah. you're coming from, but 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 to me, it's like, look, there's a lot of stories about Muhammad doing X and Y and Z. Yeah, right. There's many so, other things. So so I just made that I'm, point. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's related gonna, to this. I'm going to put that sort of to one side. Okay. And and at the end of the day, it's like I'll put it to you this way. One of the one of the characters that I I look to uh, historically is something like the Emperor Marcus Aurelius, for yes. example. A a completely different side of things. Okay, are we going somewhere else? Yeah, no, no, no. It's just just to give you an idea. Just give you. Example: sure. The Emperor Marcus Aurelius uh, fought wars, had slaves, mm. and had multiple wives. Yes. All right, and and would be considered debaucherous and sinful by today's standards. Mm. But at the same time, he also wrote very in-depth meditations and came up with a way of thought and philosophy that I think is very useful. Mm. Now, are those two contradictions? No, I do not plan to lead the life of Marcus Aurelius, mm. but some of his thoughts are useful and good. So that's where I draw separation. Yes, that's where I draw a separation. Yes. And when I am wrong, you know, 
I, I'm honest with myself and with others. No, wait a minute, I was wrong. I should change that. And that's the only thing I can control. Now, what Muhammad was as an example or not an example, I can look at the things that I think he did well and successfully and emulate that. And the things that I disagree with and the things that, I, that, that don't work, I'm not going to say that, oh, everything he did was good and everything he did was bad. Muhammad was a human being at the end of the day. I'll pick the things that I think he did well and ignore the things that I think he didn't. Yeah. That's okay. all. I, I, I totally agree. I totally appreciate what you're saying. The problem kind of that I, I, I struggle with in this yeah. is that you are Quranist. You are Quran only Muslim. Okay? Not really, no. I'm, 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 a, I'm a bit lefty. Uh, so you again, don't, you again. Don't, so, so let me ask you a, quick, uh, sure. a specific question. Do you believe everything the Quran says? Not 100%, no. Okay. So you, so you believe the Quran is from God? So, so my, my Muslim heritage is largely a result of my parenting. I wouldn't call myself the best example of a Muslim or someone anyone should emulate. Uh, my defense of Islam, so even, even when I come here to Speaker's Corner, sometimes I am for, other times I am against. It is typically depending on the argument and what is the subject that we're discussing. Uh, I'm not here, again, like yourself, the, most of the people you speak to here, Godwin, are raising flags of their tribe. I'm not coming with a flag or a tribe. I'm here just to have discussions with people and understand people's points of view. Uh, I'm not in support of X or in support of Y, at least when I come to Speaker's Corner. Uh, my relationship to Islam is that my parents are Muslim. The environment that I grew up with is Muslim. Islam is a part of my identity. So kind of a culture, culture, More cultural than anything. I wouldn't call so, so, myself a Quranist. So, so what I would say to them is that, I mean, according to the Quran, if you do not believe that these words are from Allah, this then disqualifies you from being a Muslim. Would you accept that? No. You don't like. You don't accept that. No. I. I. I think so it's. I think it's much more open to interpretation than that. And and if I behave as a Muslim, uh, does it necessitate that I believe exactly well, no. in the way of a Muslim? Because what the Quran is, is I mean, as you well know, is that the Quran is a, a revelation according to Muslims from Allah. And what Allah actually explicitly commands in the Quran is that, that if you love me. You will follow my prophet Muhammad and then I will love you. Excellent. And those who do not believe that Muhammad is a prophet, they should follow him. Those people will be just like the mushrikeen or just like the unbelievers and those people are not going to make it into Jannah or Paradise. And so what you're doing is by saying, I won't follow Muhammad, I, won't, I don't believe someone, I don't, I take, I kind of, um, not cherry pick, but I, it's like a pick and mix. It's like yeah, a, it's, a it's like a buffet. Uh, you know, yeah. I take the nice bits, and I don't believe all of the Quran. You, you're kind of excluding yourself from actually Islam itself. Well, it depends on how. And you which want to look means at it. it's a it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But yeah. But no, I see where you're yeah. coming from, yeah. but it depends on how you want to look at it. Because you've got a lot of people here who are saying I should follow everything the Prophet says in versus the Quran. in the Quran and everywhere. Yeah, okay. Versus a guy like me who's saying, Hang on, if I do this thing here, it's not going to work. Maybe it's a bad idea to do it. Oh. Uh, and another situation. Uh, what you're talking about is yes, you're you're coming to this conclusion of, of belief. What is belief? To me, yes, I can say that I am Muslim, but then I can behave like a complete dickhead. How do, how do those two work? Whereas I'm coming from a position of what are my actions dictating? Am I doing the most good for my community? Am I behaving in such and such a way? I'm not even thinking about it in terms of what does God and Muhammad think. I'm thinking of what is the most good I can do right now for the people in my vicinity. And it has nothing to do. With, and and is, is that wrong? Well, only God can judge me at the end of the day. It's like, am I doing the wrong thing? Well, I'm, I'm not getting anything out of it personally. Uh, I'm not here to say that you are wrong or that I'm right. It's like, I could very well be completely mistaken. I appreciate that. And that's why I'm going to conclude on that, on this. Um, I appreciate what you're saying. You're probably the most leftist Muslim I've ever met in Speaker's Corner. But no, 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 I, that's a good thing for me. For my, um, What I would say, just to leave, to leave you with, is this. Is I think what Muslims struggle with is finding a good role model. And I would say there is a perfect role model. And that perfect role model is Jesus Christ, yes? And I'm not just saying it just um, because you know that's my belief as a Christian. Yeah, yeah, um, I respect that. But, but, but you know, when you look at the teachings of Jesus Christ, one of the things you find when Je Jesus didn't contradict himself, when Jesus, the way Jesus treated people, okay, is the way, the way, the way he treated people, the way, sorry, the way he taught is the way he conducted himself. When he says things, statements like, love your neighbor as you love yourself. When he says, bless those who curse you, do good to those who despitefully use you. When he speaks about people who are your enemies, that you should take care of them, you should bless them, you should love them. You're never gonna find this in the Quran, you're never gonna find this in the Hadith, or you're never gonna find this from Muhammad. And I'm saying, as someone who is, you know, a critical thinker, someone who's unique in his thoughts and his ideas, I would say, 
study the life of Jesus Christ, look at his life and say, well, hold on, do you know what? If I really want something strong and, you know, robust and something that I can really stand upon and, and take great pride in, I would say, look at the, the life of Jesus Christ. Read through the book of John and see, you know, see the way he conducts himself and the way he lived. And I believe that you would come to a conclusion that, yes, you don't have to pick a mix. You can choose Jesus Christ and you can be fully assured and fully confident that you are, you are in God's plan, God's will, because Jesus Christ was God, uh, uh, was God incarnate. And he came to bring a message, a message for all of mankind, for you and I, for every Muslim, for every atheist, for every, everyone, for all of humanity, that he loves us, you know, um, and that he came to be a sacrificial, uh, be a sacrifice for our sin. And so that through that, we can now be reunited to God. And what the Bible says is that our sin has separated us from God. But if we will, if we will um, put our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ and what he did, if we will follow his example, that we, that not only we will be saved, but in the life to come, which is um, uh, life to come, which is life after death, that we will have our internal relationship with God forever. And so I appreciate no, our conversation. Fine. God bless you. Thank you oh. for that conversation. Likewise. Thank okay. you, Godwin. Thanks Take for your care. time. God bless. Yeah? Appreciate right, it. See you then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you. Let's conclude. Um, again, you know, having this discussion with my, um, with our Muslim friend, um, I don't know, Muslim or non-Muslim, I don't know, Mustafa, he's very, um, he's, I would call it a lefty Muslim. He's, he's, um, he's very liberal and open to different ideas, um, not your common orthodox Muslim. But what I would encourage someone in that situation to do is to go to a better book. The better book is the Bible. Go to a better role model. The better role model is Jesus. Go to a better, um, go to a, a, a better truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The, the definite article, meaning that he was the only way. No other way to the Father except through Jesus Christ. And I would encourage every Muslim to put away the lies and the deception of Islam. And put their faith in Jesus Christ. God bless.